Right, okay, just do an audio check. Audio is working fine. I'm just checking the live stream. Stream is healthy. Audio stream, current bit rate. Yeah, it's okay. Hello, everybody. Um, hello, everybody on the uh, comments already. Uh, I'll just read through these first. Um, good, evening, good evening, M6 SVB. Hello, Oklahoma. Uh, North Dawn. Uh, Search West, hello. Northern Dawn. Good evening. Hi, Kev. Um, <clears throat> Not channel 14 on CB. Well, we'll we'll talk about CB in a bit, actually. Audio is a bit quiet. Audio is quiet. Is it because I'm talking quiet? Is that any better? Can you give me an audio report, please? Uh, if not, I can turn the audio up. Um, hey, Paul. Uh, loud and clear here. Okay, good. Um, I hope you don't mind, Paul. I'm just... Oh, yeah, you're a moderator already, Paul. So... Um... Uh, while you're hanging around, for, mate, can you just uh, moderate as well? Okay, so it is, what time is it? It's 31 minutes past. Um, so, so the aim today is, um, is really that, what a difference a week, mates, a week makes. I mean, uh, everything's turned on its head. We've, um, we've turned quite a corner this past week been a massive change to the way that uh, society is um so uh and uh we're, i think we're, we're starting to respond to that quite well um there's a big change to how we work how we socialize how we live and um i think it's becoming really apparent that um you know p isolation is going to be a, a big sacrifice that we're having to make more some people more than others and that um, communication is going to be vital. Uh, vital not for those people that are um, in isolation themselves, but for those people that are running services, even setting up makeshift services so that people can be fed, can be cared for, be supported, be educated, and, uh, you know, and be kept sane. So um, th there's a, a bigger need than ever to... Um, you know, to keep talking, keep communicating. So, so this week's, well, this live chat, this live stream, is a little bit more than just talking about amateur radio stuff. Uh, we're going to be having um, people joining this live stream either now or later on that maybe have no interest in amateur radio, but have an interest or a need. To just be a bit more savvy about uh, communication and about coordination so i'm hoping we can have a hive mind we can work together and share lots of ideas and then hopefully and people can read through and watch the video they may start to get a better idea on how to uh, plan ahead and do that quite rapidly so every now and again i'm going to check the comments say hello to people and drop back into uh, what i want to talk about well, I've I've got I've got some structure tonight. I've got a few slides I want to just talk through, and then we're going to drop some comments in, answer some questions on the comments, and then um, later on I'm going to open up Zello, and have some sort of Zello check-ins and some questions on Zello. So if you're interested in Zello, if you you can download the app on your phone on your computer, set an account up quite quickly. And if you search on Zello or find, I think they call it, if you find the channel called the Pottery's Amateur Radio Club, then you will find what we're going to use tonight. And it acts like a radio, but it uses the internet. It's an internet, a network radio, but it gives you all the ability to talk like you're doing radio stuff as well. It's fun, but it also has a very good uh, purpose as well. Um. One thing that I will say, and, and I'm hoping that the moderators can help me with this, is that what I don't want to do tonight is actually, um, we're not going to talk about um, 
you know, we, 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 if anybody's got any questions or anything about the, the, the virus or any speculations or, or uh, any concerns, we're just going to gently point you towards your local um, NHS or the American version of that or the WHO. Uh, one thing I won't, I won't do on this channel is speculate about things. We can only work on the facts that we get. So um, th this, this live chat isn't really about, you know, have you heard about this, that and the other. This is more about, okay, what can we do with, you know, with the current situation that we know that we're in. Okay. So, but we'll always, we're here to support each other, but um, we will direct you towards, um, you know, the, the, the more sort of um, professional answers to those questions. I'm just going to check through the comments, say hello to people. Um, evening, Barry. Um, DE2TRF, hello. Um, uh, Steve. <laughs> no, no bog roll. I know. We've got plenty of newspaper. Um, you can use the rad, Radcom. Um, hi, Steve. Um, don't talk about the war. <laughs> um, hello, Mark. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I just want to. I've put some slides together. Um, this is not. This is not a. Um, I haven't got. My, I haven't got loads of slides. Not like being back at school or anything. But it just gives me something to hang some words on. So I just want to just run through some of these things, and then um, hello, John. Uh, and then we can just talk about it a bit more. So let me just change the. Okay. So, what I wanted to talk about is this idea that um, uh, we just want to look at some communication plans for for isolated people. This idea we've got to we've got to keep people talking, keep people. You know, we we we've heard about we've heard the words like social distancing, and and it's becoming apparent that we don't want to socially distance each other. We might want to keep physical distance, but socially we need to actually be closer than we've ever been. So uh, it's it's about if people are isolated physically, we need to actually make sure that we keep talking. So um, my slides are um, we we've got this challenge happening now with uh, with a lot of the networks and the mobile networks. Um, and and we're going to see a lot more bottlenecks with these services. Uh, we've seen it already. There's been a number of um, mobile networks have had outages. Internet has been flaky a few times. My internet's gone down a couple of times this week while I'm working from home. And because we've got lots of people now working from home or stuck at home, <clears throat> even schools are now going to close down in the UK increasing that activity online so we're, we're going to see much more this bottleneck um situation so we've got to start thinking about how we plan around that especially if communication is vital especially if we depend on uh, keeping communication with loved ones or if you've got a, a bunch of volunteers that are trying to coordinate themselves so we've got to be aware that this is increased uh, pressure on the networks uh, and we, we're starting to see an overcapacity in mobile phones because people are using their work landlines a lot less. So we are seeing more sort of mobile network usage. Uh, and we're also seeing, if not outages, we're seeing a throttling of uh, a lot of bandwidth on the mobile networks and the sort of domestic networks. So this is a reduced capacity as well. And so um, these will... Uh, pose a challenge for communicating with each other <clears throat> um, and the, the challenge that we've got during isolation is that um, we do, we're relying a lot on uh, domestic um, routers so we're, we're actually finding out that um, some of our um, domestic equipment is going to get a hammering so we've got to uh, be mindful of that and, and and um, you know, just just have a plan for how we try to uh, um, make sure that the routers are in the, in good tip top condition. Um, we've seen a lot of throttling is going to start happening with ISPs. 
Uh, and one of the things that we will see a lot in the UK especially is that a lot of household finances are going to take a, a hit and that means a lot of data usage will be limited. So all these things will, um, you know, will, will, will um, pose a challenge towards uh, communicating. Um, so we, we, we do need to think about that this, we've got quite a heavy reliance on, on internet uh, technologies. And in some ways, we've, we, we, it, it makes sense to start to think about what ifs. You know, how do we manage if, the, uh, if we do have um, difficulties with, with internet and also with 4G networks as well and 5G networks? Uh, some of the things that we can do if we, we are um, experiencing uh, any issues, um, if, if a device goes down in your house on the internet, we need to check, is it just that device? Uh, is it all the devices in the house or is it the router? Is it the internet? So we need to uh, you know, run a process of elimination uh, and check about um, you know, if, we, if we're using a, a mobile phone to um, VoIP call somebody. Is it just a phone or is it the whole internet? Uh, running a speed test is really useful. Uh, I know these, the, some of these, some of these um, points are very obvious to um, some people, but what I'm trying to do here is, is just try and cover some of these early facts, early stuff for everybody that might not actually, you know, uh, do this on a regular basis. Um, also, if, if we are experiencing outages, then there's a website called downdetector.co.uk. So if we've got a service that's gone down, like um, an O2 or a mobile service, if you can get on the internet somewhere else, you can check if that service is down. So uh, yeah, somebody's having, yeah, Paul's rebooted his router. Yeah, rebooting gets a new connection. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I've had, I was in the middle of a video call earlier this week and, and the, the internet went down. Uh, this this is a highly technical um, uh, tip here. This is a very secret tip, but just turn things on and off again, like turning, rebooting your router twice, uh, can actually work as well. Um, uh, so this is the, the the bit that I wanted to all of us to uh, to talk about a little bit is around the forms of communication. So. Um, the ones that the, the the ones that we use on a daily basis is mobile calling, um, we also use the landline, and then um, video calling is becoming much more popular now as as well, um, and then we've also got VoIP, voice over internet, and there's uh, there's many uh, there's many um, competing services that run all of these, um, but all of these do depend on a a good internet, a good connection. So if, you, if there's an over-reliance on these, then the weakest point is the, you know, getting data, having a connection. So we need to start to think about, especially if communication um, is a vital part of um, the service that you run, um, looking after somebody, um, keeping in contact with people, we need to actually think more than just these type of services. So this is where we start to talk about radio. Um, before I do that, I'll run through some of these comments. Um, email over HF, we'll cover that in a bit. Uh, what's the next video coming, Carl? I'm running out of nighttime viewing. Okay, right, Vi next video. Next video is gonna be next couple of days. It's in, it's in, it's in the edit at the moment. Packet radio, um, busy with family. I'll read the comments. Um, uh, evening, Steve. Um, uh, hello, Paul. Okay, so the I mean the, this. Hopefully, the, this video is going to be watched. It is being watched by people who um, 
don't normally consider radio as, as a thing that they want to do because it's not a hobby or it's not part of their sort of um, day-to-day routine. But I think um, considering radio as a backup is, is, is vital. So there's, there's different forms of radio. And I'll just try and talk through these a little bit. And then in the comments we can talk a little bit more. And then we'll have a Zello call in where we can go back over these a bit more as well. So, uh, with with radio, there's um, different various forms of radio. It's license free. Um, so license free, we can talk. Let me just to um, close that. I'll go into here. With with license uh, free radio, we can you know there there's things on the market called PMR radios. These are the sort of fixed radios that you can go to Argos and buy a pack of four or a pack of two. And uh, these can have up to about 16 channels. <clears throat> a very, very small output on them, but they can cover up to five miles. So if, you, if there's a group of you that want to keep working within a small radius, having the, a group of these radios could be a way of having a backup. Um, like I say, the 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 uh, the coverage depends on the uh, the the area that you're in. Uh, if it's a built-up area, the coverage is less. But if you if you uh, away from the buildings, you can get a bit more out of them. Um, <clears throat> with PMR, I would suggest that you buy radios that have well, they have a fixed antenna. Um, what I wouldn't suggest is going out and buying radios like that are in China, built in China. They may be called uh, Pofangs or Bofangs. Um, they aren't really walkie-talkie PMR type radios. Um, they, they, there's a chance there of um, accidentally using those radios and actually interfering with some vital uh, frequencies. So I, I, I would stick to actually PMR radios. Um, so, um, these PMRs, we can spend anything from like ninety pounds, eighty pounds, right up to a few hundred pounds for a, a, a two or, or pair of four of them. But uh, PMR is is one of the types of licensed radios you can get. Um, <clears throat> um, another type of radio. And this, this is for people that aren't amateur radio hobbyists. Um, one radio that we can't ignore, especially at these times, is the good old-fashioned CB radio. This is a license-free radio. And there might be quite a few viewers that used to be on the CB 30-odd years ago that might have a CB in the garage. They may have, um, un you know, Uncle Bill, who they're trying to keep in touch with, used to be on the CB, and he's, uh, you know, he's got a, uh, a CB somewhere with an old power pack. It might be a chance to um, consider um, using these to, to keep in, in touch with people. Um, you know, CB has gone a lot quieter nowadays. Um, there, there is one or two shouty people on there, but majority of CB people locally around here are absolutely fine. And they, uh, you know, they, they run some, uh, you know, decent um, nets on channel twenty five locally. So, you know, th this this is not just for hobbies. This is for people that you know, want to maintain some sort of level of contact. So, brushing the dust off the old CB radio might be a way forward. You know, putting an aerial in, into the loft. Um, you can you can build or get a little aerial, a little dipole aerial. Um, these are quite, um, I can spell it correctly, but <clears throat> a very simple uh, aerial that is basically the uh, two wires. Um, the, these are very simple to build. So, um, you know, these can go in the loft for a CB. So it's one thing to consider if you're not a, a licensed amateur radio operator, but you want to use um, radio that either PMR or you could use uh, CB because they are license free to a certain degree. But we'll talk about um, conditions in a bit. <clears throat> what I also um, 
let's go back to this. So you can also get business licenses as well. There, there's certain types of radio where you can buy a business license and it gives you a little bit more power and a little bit more uh, control over the frequencies that you use and it's some level of encryption. Um, so you can apply for business licenses. I don't know how long it takes, but um, uh, you know th this is maybe something to consider if you are actually trying to run a uh, makeshift um, service that needs to have some level of uh, privacy, then they may be looking at a business license um, type PMR. Uh, I'll just read through the comments just to catch up. Uh, Callum's here. Hello, Callum. Um, uh, channel 3, uh, talk group, okay. 10 for good buddy. Yeah, you actually are allowed to say 10 for good buddy on CB. You can say 1010. And you can say, what else can you say? Um, copy. I haven't got a copy on me. That they're, they're all allowed. Um, uh, CB is alive enough. Yeah, actually, CB has actually has had a bit of a uh, renaissance even before the um, uh, the virus arrived. So CB is uh, alive and kicking. So I should run fifteen hundred watts on the CB. Uh, that will be fun to cook eggs on the ground plane. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I think what what's the um I think the the legal limit is four watts. I think. Um. Okay. Um. So, we have, of course we've got license free. We've got business license. Um, we've also got uh, amateur license, amateur radio license, and I, I would have said it two weeks ago that uh, amateur radio license to get your foundation. The first level on on that um, is quite easy, but it's become a hell of, heck of a lot more difficult now that a lot of clubs have shut down. But amateur radio uh, allows you to use a vast amount of frequencies and uh, power levels and different modes. And it's a very um, versatile way of using radio. And we, we have in the UK uh, a, a number of... Uh, amateur radio operators and clubs and we have a thing called Raynet which somebody's mentioned Raynet already let's just check somebody's mentioned Raynet but um, we have these uh, groups that uh, plan for emergency crisis management uh, Raynet is, is one of them um, and with amateur radio it gives you the ability to um, to run nets and stations and, and repeaters that bounce the signal off um, mountain, off, off hills and, and mountains. So uh, amateur radio is really important. And we may find that for many people of a certain age group that have to self-isolate, that, that um, radio, especially amateur radio, um, plays a really vital uh, part in um, you know, keeping the social contact as well. So... Um, what I wanted to do really was just to um, just to start to have a chat on, on Zello and on the comments around the different types of, of radio and um, how we can encourage people to start putting some plans together to use the radio and um, you know, and then hopefully we can um, together over the next few weeks we can carry on these uh, nets and check ins and talk a bit more about communication planning. Um, so Andy, well, hello Andy, he's chair of the local N NCOM group. Okay, well this this will be interesting. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, I'm going to switch on. Um, there's a there's a, an app called Zello Z E L L O. And some of you may already be on Zello that can call in. And I just wanted just to talk, and especially Andy, if you can call in, mate. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit around the work that you're doing as part of the uh, NCOM, which is like it, so emergency communications. Um, let me just get Zello up and running. Uh, unmute. So, uh, hello, just checking Zello's working. Oh. 
Yeah, uh, if anyone wants to um, check in on Zello and we can uh, hopefully have a, a conversation about tonight's topic. Hopefully, anybody on Zello? Are you drinking milk? I'm drinking tea. Roger Dodger. Yeah, can you say Rod? Can you say Roger Dodger? Two M zero I G U in uh, Glasgow. Oh, we're two M U. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Um, thanks for joining. And Nello. So, uh, yeah, how are things for you? Uh, 2M0 IG, you're returning. Yeah, Carl, uh, things are very well. Um, I suppose what I'm thinking about is uh, all of this, um, all of this requires electricity. And I've um, been looking at um, Julian, what's his call sign? Is it OH8 STN? Um, does some very good stuff on uh, solar panels and uh, batteries. I just wonder what your plans are to uh, keep the lights on. Uh, back to you. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I mean, I, I, um, I've actually got my batteries all charged up in case I need to run any radio equipment, but. Um, as it, as it goes for like generators for running the power in the house, I've not got a generator. Um, if the if the power goes, then we just have to go to candles and uh, sing songs. Um, I've you know so uh, for me, um, especially because the work that I do, I I run a software company, which we run pretty much from home now. If the if the in, you know if the electric goes down here and it's localized, then I I I will just need to re relocate. So. From a work perspective, the uh, the chaps that I work with have got a plan in place that if we get a local outage on any of these services, we sort of have to um, sort of gather together or go to the other person's house to work from there. So from work perspective, we've got some plans, but from home, just have to hunker down and uh, um, just, just uh, you know, uh, work through that. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, 2M0IGU is uh, clear. And um, just as an aside, good to see that that MFJ1976 is doing you such a good turn. Oh, yeah, the um, uh, it's a great antenna. Uh, I do like that. It's really simple to set up. It's in the back of the car now. I've got a little... Um, well, I've got, I've got like four radios in the car now in case I need to um, jump on anything. So I've got... Um, yeah, you know, I've got all the equipment now in the back of the car. It's very simple to set up there. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Uh, it's a very good question, very good point about, um, you know, electricity. Uh, it's one thing that, the, you know, we will be uh, revisiting, them, I guess, as a country. Okay, anybody else want to um, check in and say hello on the um, Zello net? Good evening, Carl. It's, uh, it's Dave here, 2E0 UDB from uh, Stroud in Gloucestershire. Hi Dave, um, hope you are keeping as best as you can, uh, given the uh, the circumstances. Uh, I'm wondering how you're how you're getting on with uh, your sort of local planning and and dealing with uh, the changes that are happening. I mean, for uh, for us, uh, we're probably maybe different to some of the other guys on the uh, net tonight. Uh, We've got a couple of dogs, uh, but we've also got uh, three horses, uh, which aren't on our land. So uh, they're our main concern, obviously. Yes. Um, um, I mean, one of the questions that someone was asking, not on, on, not on this net, but uh, around how to look after your pet if you're having to self-isolate. Self uh, obviously, you know, it's very difficult to answer that, but... Um, I guess there's a difference between that self-isolating and, and quarantining yourself. So, um, and I think this is where uh, we're going to find that um, communities, hopefully communities uh, and uh, groups of uh, people will start to work together better. Uh, you know, the we may find that this, uh, this virus is a, a reset in, in a lot of uh, 
political differences that we've seen in the past few years in the, in the UK and that people will start working better together. Uh, and that will obviously require, bringing it back onto topic really, is, is this idea of being able to uh, coordinate. We might have a coordinated dog walking group or something, you know, all this is uh, to be uh, to worked, out, worked out, I guess. Yeah, I agree, Carl. Uh, I mean, certainly in, in our area, Stroud District Council will have um, put together various plans that include local villages, and so there are uh, things happening. Um, not, not seen anything concrete, but people are talking, and they're obviously very aware of the elderly uh, and, and the vulnerable. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people now are more concerned that the uh, children have been uh, told to uh, spend a lot of time at home now. Yeah, that's um, uh, what uh, I'm a member of a, um, a local Facebook group where people are starting to try to get organised, and um, we've got. Uh, lots of people that are springing up who have got you know availability in a car and a van um you know and the commitment and uh, we're starting to uh, i'm now getting involved in trying to you know a group of us trying to coordinate things with mapping and communication tools um, because a lot of the existing services charities and such like are um, are closing down because of safety but um, you know we're getting a lot of makeshift services being set up, so it just made me just made me think about this topic tonight of of at least trying to cover some of the um, you know some of, some of the things to consider around organising groups of people. Yeah, back to you, mate. I, I, I totally agree. Uh, I mean, a young lady uh, uh, very close to uh, where I live was uh, thinking about setting something up in a village hall for a, for a toddler group. Um, but I think there's some dangers to that because, you know, the idea of closing the schools is to keep your kids safe. You don't then want to put a load of toddlers in a confined space because um, that may then obviously affect the, uh, the virus. So I think people do just have to be a little bit careful. Yeah, it's a very good point. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one that needs to be worked out. Uh, but yeah, okay. Thank you very much for that. I'll just check if um, who else wants to uh, drop into the uh, Zello net. Whiskey Five Tango Alpha Hotel, Tim in Oklahoma. Good evening, Tim. I uh, hope things are um, okay across the pond. It's um, uh, I was uh, uh, listening. There's there's a there's a a very interesting Zello channel, and it's it is it is labelled COVID nineteen, and it's run by a chap called um, Whiskey Romeo. His call sign is, uh, and he does um, a two or three sort of uh, daily uh, broadcast, daily nets, uh, with an update on um, what's happening. Um, in the UK and abroad, and there was a a, a lady from um, the US talking about the logistics. You know the, the the huge amount of work that's happening to to get food out and about across the US. Um. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's all happening for you as well, isn't it, Tim? Yes, we're starting to uh, see the panic and people over here with panic buying and uh, other issues going on with the government shutting down large gatherings of people and telling restaurants to close and uh, night pubs, bars, taverns have been ordered closed. School has been canceled. Church gatherings are suspended. Uh, it's not so much with the weight of law here in Oklahoma. It's a recommendation that people do that. So we don't have a large police presence going around enforcing any of that yet. But uh, the, the, the shelves are pretty empty with a lot of items, but they're getting restocked just as quickly as they're emptied out. Um, I don't see a whole lot of panic going on over here in the, the regular people, but things have just started yet. I think we've got about 120 people have passed away in the, the whole country as of right now. And uh, but there are other places that are hit much harder than central 
Oklahoma, which is in the middle of the country. You've got California and New York, which are bearing the brunt of things right now. Yes, yes, it's um, it's 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 tough, tough time. Um, what we are seeing in the UK, and I hope it's happening for yourselves, is that people are starting to um, work together and organise themselves, so that food can be uh, parcelled up and organised and, and sent out to the most vulnerable. So we're seeing that through the Facebook group that I'm involved in. Uh, and hopefully over the next sort of week, we, we can put in some sort of structure so that can be coordinated, almost like from a command and control point of view, so that the right resources go to the right people, but maintaining the safety of the vulnerable. So we need to work out, you know, how, how we communicate, uh, and, you know, how this can be coordinated. So it's a, a rapidly moving picture. And hopefully, you know, you may be seeing the same in the Oklahoma. That is just starting over here. Um, we're just now getting people volunteering to go out and feed the elderly, take care of them, uh, check up on them and whatever. It's just starting. So not a lot of that actually going on yet, but it, it, I'm sure it will occur. <clears throat> yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that uh, people will step up to the mark and uh, do their bit. And uh, again, this, this, this comes back to the... The, the sort of subject matter of tonight really is um, uh, trying to at least start the conversation uh, start the conversation around how we communicate and how we organize these sort of activities and uh, you know being able to do that if, if we do have difficulties with our usual um, mobile and, and so sort of internet services Yeah, so far we've really had no disruption over here yet. Just people buying up a whole bunch of luxury items like toilet paper that they could actually live without. <laughs> yes. Back to the net. <laughs> yes, yeah, we've seen a lot of that over here as well. So um, I don't think um, that's going to stop anytime soon either. But yeah, many thanks for that, Tim. I'll just move it on and see if, uh, who else wants to uh, drop in and say hello on the uh, Zello net. Off a whiskey. Hi Andy, I was hoping you'd drop in. Uh, good to hear your voice, my friend. Yeah, and you're mate. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, sorry I'm a bit late. Um, I was sent out on uh, on a tobacco recce. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'll get all the great jobs. <laughs> That's it. very interesting. Um, you mentioned that you were involved in some um, MCOM uh, preparations. Um, I, I, it, it, do you mind explaining what that is, what it means, and what, what you've been doing? Yes, yeah, certainly, mate. Well, uh, the, the group here is Rother Valley Emergency Communications Group, and it, it basically came about as a result of a kind of a, a, a special interest group within um, our local club. A um, couple of us that live in sort of like adjoining villages, uh, we're, we're sort of, we're not preppers per se, but we are prepared. Uh, obviously me being uh, ex-reservist for a number of years. Um, and I, I used to be in the signal, so, I've, you know, I've got, I've got that background anyway, but, uh, and so, so we, we came up with a, a kind of a, an unofficial plan to keep the villagers connected if, if the phone lines ever went down. And it's kind of evolved from that now. Um, we've, we've, we've basically carried out testing on a number of bands and we, we've kind of settled on two meters as the, as, the, as the band of choice, basically due to the geography of where we live. Um, and we've, we've been testing various different systems out uh, for use within the villages, such as 
um, the uh, BF 888 bowfangs, which are uh, which we have a uh, a business license for. So we have an allocation of frequencies on a business license, um, that, and we can use those and give out, give out BF 888s to people who we trust within the villages, such as uh, you know like. Uh, uh, the village wardens or whatever um, and we have a uh, you know we've got frequencies and, uh, and call signs allocated for that so to so basically looking at uh, a bit more complex infrastructure such as winlink um, and uh, and APRS uh, GPS services so it's still early stages for the group I mean we only formed officially at Christmas um, we formed a new uh, a new club to get the RSGB affiliation and all the protections that that offers, um, and we are in the initial stages of uh, of working with Ray, of, of well of putting something in place with Raynet to maybe uh, dovetail into what they're doing or to maybe set ourselves up as another Raynet group within the uh, the local framework. So that's pretty much where we are at the moment. So, um, the testing that we have done has been quite successful. Obviously, we've used the things that, that I've been working on, such as Raspberry Pi's running WinLink um, and, the, and, the, and the WinLink RMS. Uh, so if any, any one of the villages lost communication, we can get communications into that village uh, and then obviously get emails in and out of the village from a, from a place where we've, we've got internet connectivity. So it's, it's all good. And, um, it's still a work in progress. We've got a lot of stuff still left to do, but we're getting there. Um, there's about our, there's, well, there's four of us doing it operationally, and there's a couple of hangers on, and um, and, and it's uh, it's looking good. I'm I'm uh, I'm really enjoying it. Anyway, I'll pass it back. Sounds um sounds fascinating actually. Um, and from what I know about a lot of MCOM, there's a lot of um, planning and uh, testing um, and you know rehearsing um, the, these sort of situations but I guess uh, without the luxury of time um, you know there, there there will need to be a real concerted effort to um, to go from zero to to up and running for for um, groups and, and communities that haven't got this provision in place but I do like the idea of um, you know, you've got you've got radios that can be handed out to to maintain communication across that um, you know across that area, and that that's maybe something that might have to be considered locally around here, as um, you know purchasing or, or getting hold of license free radios and provide the training, so people can actually use them correctly and understand how to get the best signal. Um, I, I, I've always liked the idea of WinLink internet over hf i've tried that a number of times there's a few videos that i've done where i've um uh i've on some videos i've won some videos have failed but um win links are really important um piece of technology to use aprs big fan of aprs then um, packet data really important um so yeah no, these these are really good points uh, you make there uh, cheers andy <laughs> Uh, golf run off the whiskey yeah no worries mate um i mean we went with the bf 888s because primarily you can get them for about eight pound a piece if you buy them in bulk and at that price point you don't mind if you lose one or two i mean there's, there's always that risk when you hand pieces of kit out but uh what we've done is we've actually tested them around the local area and they do actually work so we know that fundamentally our comms plan can actually be, be put into into practice because we've tested the uh, sort of like the um, the non amateur devices back to a central point, which is going to be a community centre in the village. Uh, we know we can work from the com from the community centre to another place out to the other village, basically, because we've we've also tested that. Um, we've tested. Uh, a scenario where we've had a guy walking around Robber Valley Country Park, which is one of my portal locations. <laughs> and uh, 
if, if I mean, if anybody was ever to get lost in there or, or the or the grounds surrounding it, we could very easily like go in there uh, and assist the search teams with APRS tracking and, uh, and radio coordination and uh, and really hook it up. So coupled with the uh, the windlink stuff, which we're we're actually using two meter uh, packet radio for the for the windlink links. Uh, coupled with that, we've got uh, the, the sort of like the bare bones of a of a decent system. Uh, back to you. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, Bofang BF treble eight. Um, I've got some on um, uh, on uh, Flea Bay. Uh, 80, 80 quid for a pack of ten. Uh, did you say that you you've got a business license? Just talk us through the business license a little bit there, and if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, golf on, golf on alpha whiskey. Yeah, yeah. The well, it's uh, the business license doesn't belong to me, but it was uh, it was purchased by one of our other members, Gary, um, who was on the uh, the call the other night. There, um, basically, it's you you apply to Ofcom for a business license. I can't remember the exact uh, amount, but it's it's not a lot. Um, and, and what you get is you get uh, you get permission to use a block of. Um, a block of frequencies. Now those frequencies are common to all the business licenses. But what you can do is you can start to use things, well, you, you can use things like DCS um, to uh, to filter out uh, other people's traffic. So what, that's that's the approach that we've taken. We uh, we've, we're using DCS tones to basically filter out other people's traffic from the from the from the like the frequencies that we've got allocated. And uh, so obviously the people on the ground can use those. Anybody that's in the group that's licensed can use uh, whatever HT they've got access to, whether it be a, a Yesu, an Icon, a Kenwood, or even a, a Bofang. I, I've just got a couple, couple of Bofangs myself. And then uh, we, can, we can coordinate activities between ourselves back to the uh, sort of like the consent um, where we would have you know, uh, a full radio installation with collinear on a mast, etc. Uh, and uh, there's enough of us where we could actually deploy across a couple of villages and uh, and uh, and coordinate that way as well. Okay, Roger, that, that's uh, all good stuff. I'm just looking at the. Um, I've just put a link into the 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 comments. Um, from Ofcom about applying for a business license, um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, there's a price guide there as well. So, not not you know not a, not a massive amount of money. If if let's say you were coordinating the group of um, care workers, or um, you know food delivery drivers that would you know so the um, th this would be a good option for that sort of level of service. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Yeah, no problem, mate. Um, yeah, there's, there's uh, I mean, that's just, that's just a starting block. Um, you can, uh, you know, you can, you can really go to town. Like I say, we've got, uh, I've got a, a Winlink RMS of my own. Uh, Gary, who's in the other village, he, uh, he's got uh, a portable RMS, and he's also got a static RMS now, which has got public, uh, which has got a public profile. And he's even going to go as far as to get that one on an NOV so it can run 24-7. So we're, uh, we're, we're kind of putting things in slowly. Like you say, the biggest problem that we have is time. That is the most scarce commodity. I mean, I'm still working, so obviously yeah. I, I have a 9-to-5 job. Sometimes it's a bit more than 9-to-5. Um, and um, obviously we all have families as well to, uh, to cater for, as well as doing other things with the hobby. So, like time is the sort of the, the most precious commodity that we have. The next being funding, because obviously everything that we're doing at the minute is coming out of our own pockets. So, yeah, of course. Yeah, it does. It does take time to achieve anything uh, substantial. <coughs> yeah, cheers, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so uh, I I think um, the 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 idea about the bowfangs and the the a light license is really important. 
uh, and then the, the training uh, for people to use it and actually rehearsing so i think let's say time is against uh, many people but um hopefully uh if if anybody that's uh, actually involved in the in this uh, chat and this this uh, live stream tonight um can take some ideas back with them to their own communities and maybe suggest some of the things that are happening that you talked about tonight that'd be really really important um so yeah cheers andy uh, i'm just gonna just uh, move on and see if anybody else wants to join in um anybody else want to join into the uh, zello chat Uh, Mike six Romeo November Foxtrot. Mike six Romeo November Foxtrot. Good evening. Um, yeah, thanks for um, uh, waiting patiently. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering. Um, yeah, could you, could you just give us your name and, and where from and a little, little bit about what's happening in the, in your area tonight. Uh, I'm from a place called Workington in Cumbria. Um, as you can tell from the call sign, I'm uh, a foundation license holder with uh, RSGB. And uh, I'm also uh, a member of the Cumbria Rearnet Group. Um, and one of the things, or oh, a number of things, are appearing uh, in public, uh, which are not really the best. I mean, people seem to be panic buying. I don't know why, but everybody seems to want toilet rolls. Of <laughs> all the things you could possibly want to shop and stock up on, toilet rolls. But uh, yeah, um, the um, county council uh, up here are uh, working with all the local district uh, and town councils um, to set up a network uh, where vulnerable people uh, are listed uh, and we uh, work with the uh, council uh, doing deliveries and visits. Over to you. Oh, fantastic. So so uh, not only are you actually part of the RaidNet system, you actually are um, part of the um, the, the, the network of, of uh, drivers and you know, the, the key network that's going to feed the most vulnerable. So um, ha have you um, started to put, you know, have you got plans in place around the communication? Is that, is that, is that baked, baked into your current um, operations? Yeah, all in hand at the moment. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, my first name is Skip, that's Sierra Kilo India Papa. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, the um, resilience unit uh, at the county council uh, who take care of emergencies, disasters, etc., etc. Um, they seem to be coordinating uh, quite well. And uh, I just stand by and somebody says something, I need to go somewhere to do something, off I go. Um, but one thing I do do is keep well away from everybody else. Um, and when I go to a household, um, I knock on the door and stand well back, uh, chat to the individual. Yeah. If I'm delivering food or anything, I say, we've got this food for you. Um, if you need any help, ring this number or uh, text us if you've got a mobile phone. And it seems to be uh, kicking off quite nicely. Um, we are prepared for just about anything. That's uh, fantastic to hear, Skip. Very encouraging. Um, so the yeah, resilience unit, um, and I guess that all local authorities have them to some degree. Whether they actually um, you know, make, make any uh, sort of public-facing uh, activities is difficult to know, but in the background, I guess these, these are um, running in the background. So thank you very much uh, for that, Skip. I'll, I'll just move it on. And um, see who else wants to to, um, to join in to the Zellonet. So anybody else want to um, join the Zellonet? Okay, so um, I'll leave Zello for the moment. If people want to just drop in, just you can just drop in or say hello to you on Zello. 
Um, something that, that um, is happening, I'm just turning that down a bit hot there, I'm just turning that down a bit. So, um, locally in Stoke, we've got, um, uh, there's a, a chap called John, um, John O'Toole, I'm sure it's John O'Toole, he's starting to run a two metre uh, net starting tomorrow, 11am, I think it's a two metres SSB, single sideband. Um, we one thing I have noticed in the amateur amateur radio world is that there's more people navigating towards um the uh, hubnet, uh, so hubnet can be accessed through um anybody with amateur radio license who can get onto uh, two meters or or seventy sems or onto digital radio, um, are starting to um, gravitate towards. Oh, well, it's uh, it's still active. Uh, it just went very quiet. Uh, we were just talking. Uh, this is Dave, rather two uh, e zero UDB uh, about vulnerable people and the elderly. I'm th just wondering what people's views are now that um, with the young children coming home, you've obviously got a lot of single parents around. They're going to be pretty much stuck in in their own homes. Are, are they going to now be deemed as as vulnerable and need to be looked after? It's a uh, um, keep the kids quiet. Um, it's so I'll just read in the comments. It's 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 a, a, a question that I can't answer to be honest. Um, uh, I think um, the the guidance that we are given is around. Um, I think we ha what what we have to be, um, what we have to be sort of clear about is the difference between social isolation to protect yourself or and others. Uh, if you if you're symptom free, and um, quarantine, where um, you you actually can't go out because you've got two or more of the symptoms, so um, the, the, there is a difference there, and I think that's something that um, we have to be aware of. But again, all all I can suggest is um, read the current um, guidance because this video will be you know will be available over the next you know, a few months or years so the guidance will change so um it's difficult to suggest what to do apart from read the guidance but there is a difference between isolation from self-isolation and quarantine and that and that makes a difference to um how you you know how you go about your daily daily business um so sorry that's not really an answer as such it's just um you know it's just my take on things I wasn't expecting an answer, Carl. It was uh, just it all went pretty quiet on the net. Yeah, well, thank you very much. No, no, it's it's you know it, it, the, these questions are are uh, very close to us at the moment. We're having to um, react and, and move and think very quickly and change the way that we live. It's it's ha all happened so quickly. So yeah, I think we're just learning from each other <clears throat> in many ways. But um, um, yeah, the the kid the kids are going to be at home now. Um, somebody mentioned around the other day, um, actually it's an opportunity to uh, teach our kids the things that they can't teach at school. So it's a shame that we can't teach the kids to uh, operate radios and, and actually be a bit more old fashioned about things like that. You never know, we might be able to get a, a little foundation, a virtual foundation course going. That's, uh, that's perfectly valid, Carl. It's Dave again, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, the uh, the kids are at home. Um, yeah, teach them to cook. You tell them where the Hoover is. It all works, <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, I read the other day. Yeah, teach them how to knit. Teach them how to... Um, uh, yeah, teach them how to cook. Teach them how to clean the fridge. Teach them how to clean, clean the, the plates after them. There's lots to learn, lots to do. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'll just check if there's um, anybody else wants to uh, join the uh, Zello chat tonight. Good evening, Mike Zero, Popper, Charlie Fox, Foxtrot, Paul in Sheffield. <clears throat> Good evening, Paul in Sheffield. Um, thanks for um, waiting patiently and thanks for joining the net. So how are things uh, in Sheffield um, tonight? Uh, very good at uh, my home address, um, managing to get lots of jobs done around the house. 
throwing a temporary antenna up outside. Uh, hoping to get a cool in your twos and seventies up today, but weather's not been too kind. So if it's a, a little better tomorrow, uh, then we'll get that up. I'm uh, a member of the uh, Rother Valley Emergency Radio uh, Network, and uh, I think Andy's on as well this evening, uh, also a member. So uh, good evening, one and all from Sheffield. <coughs> Yep, fantastic. Yeah, um, Andy's made a fantastic contribution. Um, it's very inspiring the work that you're doing. Uh, we've just um, have been learning about um, business license from Ofcom, and somebody's put a comment in as well that actually, if you are a charity, Ofcom will uh, provide a business license for half price. So that's really important to know. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, Andy's just mentioned that um, you're part of the the same M MCOM group. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so um, just um, checking if there's any more comments. Yeah, uh, yeah if, if you don't mind, I'll just check if anybody else wants to join the uh, the Zello chat. If anybody else wants to uh, chip in tonight on the Zello chat. I'll just say hello. Uh, this is uh, Stuart from Budapest. Uh, my call here is Hotel Alpha 5 Romeo Victor. And when I'm back in the UK, it's Mike Zero X-Ray X-Ray Sierra. Uh, I don't have really much to add, um, but I'm uh, very keen to hear what's going on. I want to hear what's going on back home for one thing, but we're also trying to do our own thing here too. Um, I don't know of any organised... Uh, stuff going on here in Hungary at the moment, but uh, we're a little bit behind the curve, I think, with uh, what's been going on in the rest of the world, over. <clears throat> yeah, cheers, Stuart. Yes, we're, um, we're having to, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a scramble, uh, um, is the best way to describe what's happening on the ground in the UK at the moment. Um, it's, obviously, there's a lot of worry around, um, but it's, it's um, in some ways it's refreshing to see um, that people are, um, m you know, many people are starting to try to work together and organise themselves. Um, I mean, I don't want to say, um, you know, I, I don't want to say the words blitz spirit because uh, it's not it's not that, but there's a lot of spirit. Um, and and in some ways, uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, it feels like the virus is... Um, um neutralize a lot of the um social uh division that was you know that happened over the past few years over the european um elections and such, such like so um I, i'm seeing that people are starting to uh, want to work together and and to, you know and, and to coordinate themselves again that's one of the reasons why i wanted just to at least start start some conversations around and you know what how are others managing themselves and i'm hoping over the next few weeks to be able to uh, maybe run one or two or more of these these sessions and just try and collect some um ideas from different di from different countries and different parts of the uk and share those with people so that others can learn how to coordinate themselves and how, how to communicate and um, yeah back to you Stuart. Yeah, the um, only thing I could offer, um, as most of us are at least technically oriented, even if we're not engineers, some like myself are engineers, but not everybody is, there are, um, there are things you can do to help out. The um, World Health Organization has some kind of uh, programs they're organizing. I'll try to find it in a second. One of my mates has uh, put me on to... Uh, a website it's something like uh, engineers for action or something like that and the basic idea is that uh, oh yeah it's called projectopenair.org I'll put a link into the uh, YouTube comments in a minute and basically engineering types uh, like ourselves uh, can go along to this website and uh, it's a open source kind of collaborative engineering global uh, organization where we all try to find solutions to to the current problems for example lack of masks um, which many people 
in most countries have a problem with getting their hands on masks. Uh, I've seen, for example, um, Big Clive, I don't know if you guys know him and his YouTube channel, he showed uh, how to make uh, hand sanitizer from basic chemicals. Um, I'm currently working on a active uh, ultraviolet C filter for masks because um, people use UVC to uh, sanitize water or air in air conditioning units and stuff, but I don't think anybody's been doing it with masks. And for first responders and people who have to wear the more serious masks, uh, this could be a, a, a real um, valid solution. They're unlike the uh, ones that you have to throw away all the time, these lamps usually work for about 8,000 hours or something. We would need batteries, but um, we could probably find a solution to that. So I, I'm working on that at the moment. Um, different people have different things they're working on, though. Over. I, yeah, I've got to say that's fantastic. Um, um, so um, if you can drop that link into the to the comments, that would be. Um, I'm, I'm going to share that with some of the groups that I'm involved in on Facebook. Um, the, you know, I think it's a. Uh, it's a it's a real you know we're seeing um people trying to find people have got different skill sets trying to find a way to utilize them to, you know put them to the good use so um it's really good to hear that um thank you Stuart. thing is uh, just to basically keep aware of what's going on i'm not into uh, medicine as such but i've learned an awful lot from dr dr uh, john campbell's youtube channel he seems to be one of the only people i find who has a honest and um well he's an educated guy in in medicine he used to teach nurses i think and he's been all around the world but he doesn't have any politics or any axe to grind so you get real um useful information from him and he's a bit critical of the way we're handling things in the uk um because of the lack of testing and so on but uh but you get to hear what's going on and he puts out at least one video per day so he's really following this stuff i'll put a link to his channel in as well if you guys aren't familiar with it over yep uh, thanks you yeah no please yeah drop that in um it's it's we're, i think there's a, a thirst for knowledge um and i think there's a thirst for knowledge that we can trust because um uh, you know that this has been um, one of the criticisms in in, in recent times is, is around trusting a lot of the media sources so it'd be really good to to uh, find who people can trust uh that haven't got a political angle to uh or pl political axe to grind so yeah thank you Stuart. thanks for that uh, thanks for those links um as well so um if you don't mind i'll just move it on to um see if anybody else wants to join in with the zello chat tonight so please uh, if you want to join in uh, make yourself known okay so we'll leave that leave that as it is then if somebody wants to join in just drop in just gonna check the time I don't want to go on too long. We've gone on for an hour and ten minutes now, so I want to say thank you to everybody that's uh, contributed. Um, that um, lots of comments here, and um, some uh, everybody is is, is uh, called on Zello. Thanks to everybody. Some great links dropping in. Some great ideas. Um, what I'm probably going to do is run maybe one of these once a week for maybe an hour, and just try and catch up and and share some. Um, examples of what people are doing because i think a week is a long time in the current state of affairs um hi lands Lans hi mate um so it's, yeah it's been really interesting um i'm going to um for me i'm taking away this idea of uh, the the uh, business license and those bowfangs you know buying a, a group of them and doing some testing and some uh, training around them but uh, yeah, thank you everybody. I um, I'll I'll I'm hoping it'll be Wednesday next week again at the same time. I just need to confirm and look at my plans, um, because things are rapid changing rapidly for me. Um, my my business is getting involved in, 
uh, developing some crisis software and releasing crisis software. So we're, we're getting uh, really, really busy at the moment. So finding the time um, is, is, is getting a bit more of a challenge. But hopefully I'll, I'll dedicate some time for um, these sort of conversations. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's been really great to see so many people involved. And, um, you know, I hope you hope the week's OK for everybody. Uh, stay safe. Wash them hands, you dirty pigs. And um, yeah, I look forward to the next time we chat. I've got one video coming out this week, which is recorded over a week ago. So um, that might be some light relief. Um, um, it involves whiskey uh, and radio, which is not not always a good combination, but that's coming out this week. So uh, have a good one and I'll uh, catch you all again soon. So um, let me just get my buttons lined up because I have to press certain buttons to end the, end the uh, live stream. And I'll catch you all again soon. So uh, bye-bye for now.